The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hi, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on your time zone. Uh, my name is Ray Weston from Gitan. I'm the Product Manager for Analytical. And I'd like to thank you all for joining us here on this uh, webinar on optimizing stem spectrum imaging for high-speed analysis. My colleague, Paolo Longo, will be uh, giving the presentation. Uh, just a bit of housekeeping to start with. The, um, if you need to submit any questions, if you need to submit any questions, you can use this question panel at the bottom. We'll try to get to all the questions at the end of the presentation, but uh, if you have any connectivities or problems with the audio or video, if you could send us a quick message, that would really help. So Paolo Longo, our presenter today, uh, has been with Good Tan since about 2011, and he's our application and training manager. Some of you may have already seen him out in the field in in the various, uh, various laboratories. Um, he uh, co comes to us from the University of Alaska, where he worked with Professor Alan Craven. And it's a very groundbreaking speed spectrum imaging. And without further ado, I'll pass everything over to Paul for the presentation. All right, thanks a lot, Paul. Welcome. I would like to welcome everyone to this webinar on uh, optimizing STEM spectrum imaging for uh, um, uh, for high speed uh, analysis. So basically, in this webinar, we'll try to show you how to you know best optimize your system, your EOS uh, system, in order to get uh, um, fast uh, EOS um, uh, EOS acquisition uh, uh, data. So basically, basically during this webinar. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things. But first of all, uh, the, uh, let me ask you questions. Do you want to acquire the EOS data at high speed? Obviously, if you're attending this webinar, uh, the answer is yes. And uh, the answer is, the only answer is uh, that you need to use digital microgas to acquire the EOS data. To so use other software such as uh, TIA, which is the other uh, commercially available uh, software for acquiring EOS data with uh, GetAm spectrometer. And but if you use uh, other software, then uh, digital micrographs, you'll never get uh, uh, pretty high uh, speed acquisition. Okay? We we'll still have to do a little bit of work even now with digital micrograph to get uh, um, fast EOS data acquisition. So first of all, uh, this is the overview of this presentation, this short presentation. So we'll spend one slide on defining uh, what EOS system spectrum imaging is. Uh, we're going to show you how to best synchronize the beam position and EOS spectrum without. We're going to show to optimize the EOS camera for fast spectral acquisition. And then I'm going to show you some examples, mostly from uh, atomic EOS uh, uh, acquisition uh, from uh, a couple of different uh, materials. OK, let's start uh, with the spectrum imaging uh, acquisition uh, definition. So spectrum imaging uh, uh, definition. So basically here, um, we need to be in STEM mode, so we need to have uh, a probe over the sample. We divide the area of interest uh, in um, pixel. And then um, we scan the beam uh, pixel by pixel. So this is actually the advantage of uh, acquiring the data in STEM mode because uh, STEM, uh, um, STEM based techniques are like multimodal uh, acquisition. So basically, we can acquire simultaneously um, uh, EOS. We can build our STEM image pixel by pixel using our STEM detector. And ideally, you want to have your STEM detector uh, below the screen because you can use. Uh, uh, small camera lens and get a big collection angle. At the same time, you want to have something that's, uh, um, that is, that is uh, sitting uh, right above uh, uh, the spectrometer to have a good correlation between uh, um, the EOS data and uh, the image in the, uh, the stem image that you're building a pixel by pixel. If you have an EDS detector, you can also acquire EDS data. If you have a CL uh, detector, you can acquire capital luminescence uh, spectra point by point. This is a typical example of three-dimensional uh, stem EOS spectrum imaging where we have the two dimensions are the uh, special dimension, X and Y, and the third dimension is the energy. So here the acquisition of the EOS uh, uh, spectrum is done uh, in parallel, where uh, for each uh, pixel we acquire the entire uh, EOS spectrum. Okay? So basically what we want to do, we want to try to uh, go across the area as fast as possible. But at the same time, we want to try to get as much signal as possible in order to acquire 
yields of spectra with a good uh, signal to noise ratio. All right, first thing that we have to do, we have to try to best synchronize the beam position and the yields of spectra without. Okay, in order to do that, we start from our spectrum imaging palette, which is this one here. We have number of pixels, uh, obviously a resolution of the area of interest, and um, so the number, so the la this uh, will tell you the, la the resolution of uh, each pixel size. Here is where we define the, the exposure time. In this case, is uh, one milliseconds. Now you have to click on uh, the toolbox button here, and then you're going to have a spectrum imaging uh, setup uh, uh, window. So here on scanning device, you have two different choices for uh, acquisition. You have software synchronization and hardware synchronization. So if you want to get the fast uh, EOS data, you need to be in STEM mode, you need to be in hardware uh, synchronization. So in hardware synchronization, uh, the synchronization between uh, the camera without and the beam positioning, in the case of uh, digital, is done through the So this is what to get uh, faster EOS data. Make sure that uh, you are not remote. Some pay is that the only in the latest generation of EOS spectrometer, uh, GIF Quantum and the Infinium. The other thing you have to, um, that's important that you can choose the additional signal. And in the latest version of Digital Micrograph, GMS 2.31, the software will automatically choose the best synchronization mode, which, which, is, uh, which is always server sync if your exposure time is relatively low. So now we learn how to best synchronize the beam position in the camera without. Now we have to try to optimize the EOS camera uh, for faster spectral acquisition. How do we do that? We beam. So basically, that's uh, you can see here two different uh, uh, EOS uh, spectra um, uh, on the CCD. And uh, if you want to bin, you basically have two different options. So one is along the y-axis, which is a non-dispersive direction, and the other one is along uh, the x-axis, which is a dispersive direction. In general, uh, when we bin uh, uh, with uh, uh, with this uh, CCD, uh, we always gain sensitivity and speed. And this happens especially if you bin on a non-dispersive direction. The advantage of uh, binning on a non-dispersive direction is that like, you improve the speed dramatically, so you increase the speed. At the same time, you increase the sensitivity of your CCD. But you get all this uh, and not exp basically without losing uh, any energy resolution. So if you compare these two situations here, so we have uh, two different uh, EOS spectra here. One is acquired uh, unbin, which is the one on top. The one at the bottom is acquired uh, with um, after binning uh, um, along the vertical axis by 10 times. You can see the energy resolution uh, remain, remains unchanged. So ultimately, we can say the increase the binning improves speed, sensitivity, and noise budget, but we lose the dynamic we lose the dynamic range and also gain purity. So we get. Uh, a little bit of uh, noise. This is possible because of uh, the quadrupolar uh, optics uh, present in, uh, in uh, this uh, Gatani EOS spectrometer. So you can do the same thing uh, even uh, with the old generation of uh, EOS spectrometer. You get the same, uh, the same effect. So now we want to learn how we change, uh, how we change the binning uh, in this uh, EOS spectrometer. So we start from uh, our auto filter palette. So here we can change the, the energy, the dispersion. You note that we are in a spectroscopy mode, so the EOS pattern is highlighted. So if we if go uh, right to the bottom, all the way to the bottom, the auto filter palette, we have a uh, toolbox button here. If you click on this button, we open the EOS acquire setup box. And if you go on detector setup, this is where you actually change uh, uh, the camera setting for uh, view SI mode which is basically view mode, and you click this button, and the same mode is the spectrum imaging. So if you want to change uh, the bini, you just go on uh, edit. If you want to change or rename or save, you just go and then you click vertical bini to uh, 
other one is on the vertical axis. This is where you actually will change the meaning. You get um, higher speed acquisition and also you get higher sensitivity without losing any, any energy any spectral resolution. And in general, the one in uh, uh, level, which is uh, 130 times on the y-axis. So this is basically what you want to start for most of the for most of the application, because again we get higher speed, we get uh, uh, more signal, um, we make our CCD more sensitive. At the same time, we don't lose any energy resolution. Okay. There are cases where you want to reduce meaning, especially when uh, maybe you use a binning of 26 or 10. If you're looking at uh, if you have too much signal and you are saturating your CCD, so you want to try to reduce the dynamic, um, to increase the dynamic And yeah, the question is when you are allowed to say for as a default something that is quantum and feels the compact. We have to I'll read. Um, over the pretty large area, we still have enough spatial resolution to look at details uh, in um, in the gate oxide uh, uh, region. So you can still see the Afria oxide layer, which is about one nanometer. So without uh, going in uh, higher magnification, we can still get all of our information in uh, uh, going pretty fast over a big area. At this point, let me show you some uh, uh, example of fast CIOS analysis uh, from uh, uh, different materials. We start with some data, so basically looking at uh, at atomic level, looking at interface between strontium, titanium, and lanthanum iron oxide. Data were taken using the instrumentation uh, 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 IBM Almadine in San Jose. So we acknowledge Dr. Phil Rice and Teato Puria for letting me use the microscope and provide uh, um, the sample for the analysis. The instrumentation uh, uh, system is basically um, it is a geo layer M200 with cold fake pro correct and a GIF quantum uh, ER. All data were taken at 200 kV in digital micrograph, obviously. So the first uh, the first data uh, were taken across this interface and uh, the uh, the um, the beam was scanned over a pretty large region uh, across the interface along the interface. You can see that according to this image. Uh, uh, the interface looks pretty nice, uh, nice and smooth, and the area scan is actually pretty big. It's uh, several nanometers. The entire area was covered at atomic level in just over uh, six minutes, and uh, each spectrum was acquired with an exposure time of two milliseconds. Even with such a short exposure time, 
if you you can extract a, a spectrum from uh, uh, the strontium and titanate area, you can clearly see how well resolved the, the white lines of the strontium are. And this proves that the eye, uh, the eye amount of signal like going to the spectrometer here with just such a short exposure time. And this was achieved by using a pre-high vertical binning and again a pretty large uh, uh, collection angle, so basically a short camera length. So again, if we, if we use a high binning, big collection angle, we still get enough signal, even now for looking at uh, high energy edges such as uh, the strontium uh, L23 up 1940 EV um, down to the atomic level in two millisecond exposure time. This is the atomic map that we get, it's a color map. You can see the elemental diffusion the interface, but the interesting thing that you noticed uh, is uh, the pretty great contrast that we get in this map. So you can clearly see the atomic column for strontium, from, uh, for uh, titanium, lanthanum, and uh, iron on the other side of the interface. And again, the entire map was taken in uh, six minutes. So this proves uh, the pretty high collection efficiency of uh, the EOSA spectrometer and the way we set it up for the experiment and also the stability of this uh, particular microscope installation. Since the uh, microscope installation uh, was uh, seemed to be pretty stable, we decided to put another sample in and look at a much wider uh, region. So now covering an area of 50 nanometers by 50 nanometers, maybe more than that. And we acquired um, an atomic map which is made of uh, 1050 pixels by 1050 pixels, so basically over 1.1 million uh, EOS spectrum and each EOS spectrum was at 1.5 milliseconds, so we actually uh, reduce the exposure time even more and again no special big correction was applied. It's pretty interesting to notice how the uh, this, uh, lanthanum uh, manganese uh, layer is actually um, is pretty, is pretty rough, uh, the interface, you can see how the uh, is uh, thickness is changing across uh, uh, along the interface. And again, these data uh, were taken with a very large collection angle, which was obtained with a camera length of about uh, uh, one centimeter, as shown in the microscope uh, uh, acquisition software. So EOS is good for composition analysis. It's great for composition analysis, so we show some data, uh, some results to prove that. But EOS is also good uh, to give uh, com uh, chemical information. So we want to see oxidation state, etc. So in order to do that, uh, um, so let me show you some uh, some other uh, some other examples. Some results are taken uh, uh, Max Planck Institute in uh, Stuttgart. So we acknowledge uh, Professor Banagen for uh, um, providing the sample and microscope access. His uh, microscope installation is similar to the previous one, with the exception of uh, the spectrometer. So here is a GIF quantum ERS. Again, data acquired at 200 kV and with digital micrograph. So the first problem uh, was to map uh, uh, the oxidation state of the cilia at the, at the interface. We know there is a change in the oxidation state going from uh, um, cilia 4 here in the bulk to cilia 3 here in the interface. On the other side of the interface, uh, we have yttria stabilized zirconia. So we set up, uh, we set up the exposure time. We set up a exposure time uh, with um, 20, uh, 20 milliseconds and we have an energy resolution of uh, 3 EV which was achieved uh, with a dispersion of 1 EV. We did it in this way because we wanted to have enough uh, field of view to cover uh, an energy range from the oxygen, KH, all the way to the zirconia at 2200 EV. Okay? So the question is uh, try to understand whether this uh, energy resolution was good. But again, uh, we used uh, in relatively short exposure time, 20 milliseconds. And the entire area in green was covered in 110 seconds. We are less current than the previous experiment. Again, pretty large collection angle. If you see here this data, you can clearly see that uh, um, the map is resolved, even the oxidation state is resolved. So you can see pretty nice. Uh, this is a green, this is a cedar oxide with the cedia in oxidation state 4. Four. And here, and here we have uh, uh, um, uh, at the interface, so we have a serial oxidation state uh, of uh, uh, free right here at the interface. 
and we have a map of uh, Zirconia, Yttria on the other side of the interface. You can see the interface is pretty flat on this side, but it's relatively um, is a, a relatively kind of damaged um, and not smooth from this other side of the interface. This map was obtained using means of uh, MLS fitting, where the two reference spectra were taken. Uh, the serial four was taken on this side of uh, the interface on the bulk serial side and the serial 3 was, ex was extracted right at the interface. You have the 3B energy resolution, you can still see um, the difference between the serial M45 uh, in the case of serial 4 plus and serial 3 plus. So in uh, the case of serial 4 plus, uh, the ratio with the white lines uh, is fairly different than in the case of uh, serial 3 plus. We also have a little bit of chemical shift and also in um, the white lines have, uh, seem to be more broad uh, in the case of Serial 4. We can also map uh, this oxidation cell atomic clamor over a much bigger uh, region. But in this case, we wanted to cover a much bigger region. We decided to decrease the exposure time down to 8 milliseconds. And again, you can see the same thing that we've seen before. So the interface between um, the E3 and the Zirconia um, with the Serial 3 plus oxide is relatively smooth but it becomes a pretty disordered uh, a random uh, between the Serial 3 plus oxide and the Serial 4 plus oxide. You also see some diffusion. Uh, you can see the blue going to the bulk. So a good thing of EOS uh, is that uh, the signal is very localized. So you can just go in there, extract the EOS spectrum, and compare to the one at the interface. And like in this case, you can see EOS spectrum extracted from this region. We compare it with the EOS spectrum extracted from the other region, you can see the two difference match pretty, uh, the two spectra match, the features in these two spectra match uh, uh, pretty nicely. So we can tell that what we see here is, uh, is true. Again, this data were taken now with the same beam condition and pretty short uh, camera length. We just decrease the exposure time because we know that we have quite a lot of signal going to the spectrometer. In summary, uh, we can conclude to say that digital micrograph is the only software capable to acquire EOS data in a fast manner. So if you want to go fast or you want to optimize your uh, spectral acquisition, do use other software. Stick with digital micrograph. Or if you don't have it, try to get digital micrograph. The setup for fast EOS acquisition it's, uh, includes very few steps. Make sure that you have uh, hardware synchronization mode. Uh, make sure that you're using uh, pre-high vertical binning. In the case of the quantum or the infinium, try to start uh, with the vertical binning of 130x. And always use a large collection angle, which can be achieved uh, using the shortest camera length available in your microscope. These are basically the three steps very important uh, in order to get uh, uh, to acquire uh, uh, fast uh, EOS data. Now, before uh, we are very, very close to the end, let me talk about, let me spend a couple of minutes talking about some new products uh, that um, are uh, coming up uh, in uh, next year uh, at Gatan. So we have uh, GMS3, so because uh, it's uh, due to be shipped uh, by the end of 2014. So we have uh, important features, this new version of digital micrograph. Uh, the interface does seem to be more clean and the user interface is much more uh, uh, simplified. Uh, we remove all clutter and we actually improve the dramatically the user interface. We remove all the complexity but not the functionality. So basically what you learn here is still applies to the new version. So this new software now, it's, we made it much easier and now can be used uh, for beginnings, for beginners and also for uh, more experienced uh, uh, users. We improve the data management so we can store and save composite data together. So we I introduced the concept of uh, workspaces. We can manage uh, data during microscope session. And more importantly, we dramatically improved uh, the quantification uh, capability for EOS ADS, also mapping. So we can do much faster mapping and also we can uh, uh, map and quantify more accurately and also more simplified than, uh, than the previous generation. Let me show you an example how the new uh, GMS is going to look like. You can see color is different. 
interesting thing is that we have on the left uh, on the left hand side we have a microscope system. So basically, you know exactly the conditions of your microscope, whether you are in TM mode or STEM mode. In this case, we are in STEM mode because we have a probe pointing over the sample. You see what you have inserted and where the uh, camera located. You can see like uh, quickly whether you use spectroscopy or mode. You just put this button here. The interesting thing is that the, uh, we uh, simplified again the user interface uh, and we sorted all these windows for application. So if you're doing anything as STEM uh, analytical based technique, uh, you're going to see here uh, only what you need for uh, acquiring the data processing uh, uh, STEM EOS data or STEM EDS data. So in this case, you can see you have EOS Acquire Open, you also have EDS. Okay, so you have DigiScan here. You can see here it's pretty, um, it's, it's pretty nice, uh, uh, styled and clean. In, uh, you're not going to see the mess of a lot of windows open on top of each other. So this is an example of uh, uh, acquisition, EOS acquisition on uh, Palladium Gold uh, Catalyst. Uh, this is doing your data. We have low core loss, high core loss, and automatically the software will display the map for palladium and gold. Pretty nice and clean. So last slide is basically on uh, our new camera. It's a one view. This new camera is a 16 megapixel camera that is capable to acquire images uh, and also video. So you can do like uh, in situ in situ analysis uh, for all the TM applications. So as far as the performance of this new camera uh, will match uh, the US 4000, but we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a much higher speed. So if you run it unbeam, so a 4K by 4K full resolution, we get 25 frames per second. If you bin to 512 by 512 uh, resolution, you get over 300 frames per seconds. And this is actually pretty good if you wanna do and in situ measurement. And this camera will come uh, with a powerful in situ software for video recording and uh, editing. We said the, the, the camera performance, the image quality of this camera is pretty high. There's two examples. These are images, TM images taken up just uh, with a regular uh, fake microscope, just an uncorrected for microscope. This image was taken across uh, in GAN GAN uh, multi layers interface. You can see the quality of the image in this case. And this actually, this image is very nice. Here we have an example of, of uh, uh, zeolite. We all know that uh, zeolite uh, are pretty beam sensitive materials, pretty hard to get uh, a resolution images here. And you can see how pretty nice and clean uh, this, uh, this, image, uh, this image here. This again uh, proves uh, the, um, the performance of this camera. You can also see some uh, uh, platinum uh, uh, nanoparticles uh, deposition. And with this, uh, I conclude that this, uh, this webinar. Um, I would like to thank everyone for attending. And if you have any questions, just uh, go ahead and ask. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, okay, thank you very much Paolo. That was uh, very illuminating. So um, actually, we're at the end of our time for today. Um, but if you do have any further questions, uh, we'd be more than happy to answer them either through email or uh, uh, directly through one of our representatives or if you, uh, if you know how to uh, uh, or if, if you want to even give us a call, that would be great. Um, okay, so that will in conclude our presentation for today. Thank you again for, for taking this time to spend with us. And thank you all for uh, joining the presentation. Have a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, as the case may be. Thank you.